In this video, I'm going to show you how to record audio in GarageBand for iOS. Whether you're capturing vocals, guitars, or just some musical ideas on the go, GarageBand for iOS has a few different ways for you to actually get sound in. And in this video, I'll walk you through what I think are the best options. I'll also show you the best way to set up your project for recording to make sure everything goes smoothly. If you're new here and want to get better at using GarageBand, improve your mixes, and just unlock everything the app has to offer, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the wee bell down below. When you open GarageBand for iOS and create a new project, it drops you straight into the instrument selection screen. To record audio, you want to swipe through the options and choose the audio recorder. GarageBand automatically configures a basic vocal chain when you pick this option, which makes it ideal for quickly capturing voice, acoustic guitar, or pretty much anything else you can point a mic at. Having said that, I personally like to record a clean track with no effects applied to it. This just makes things a whole lot easier when you come to mix and work with your recorded audio. You can do this by opening the presets menu in an audio recorder track here, and then hitting reset here. This will leave you with a dry default track to work with. A new GarageBand for iOS project will default to just eight bars in length. To quickly and easily adjust this, tap on the tiny wee plus icon in the top right and select section A, then turn on automatic. You can also set this to a specific number of bars if you prefer. You can turn the metronome on or off by tapping it here. You can also set up a count in, which gives you a bit of a runway after you hit the record button before recording actually begins. Okay, the quickest and easiest way to get audio into GarageBand is to use your iPad's built-in microphones. Every iPad has at least one, but more often an array of them, and on newer models like the iPad Pros, they're actually not too shabby. Built-in mics vary in quality depending on your iPad model. Older or entry-level iPads tend to sound a bit boxy and thin. Newer Pro models have what Apple call studio quality mics, and while that's maybe a little bit of a stretch, they are noticeably better. When you're ready, just move the playhead to the point you want your recording to start, point your iPad's microphone towards yourself or the instrument you want to record, and hit the record button. Once you're done, hit stop, and your recording will be there on screen in the form of an audio region. Still, if you're looking for professional quality recordings, the built-in microphone probably won't cut it to be honest, but for quick ideas, voice memos, or rough acoustic tracks, it'll definitely do the job. If you want better sound quality but still want to keep things really simple, a USB microphone is a great way to go. Brands like Blue, Apogee, and Shure all make USB microphones that are plug and play compatible with iPads, provided that you have the right adapter, depending on your model. Most iPad models nowadays have a USB-C port, and a simple USB adapter like this one will do the trick. Just attach it to your iPad, 
and then attach your USB microphone to it. Once connected, GarageBand will usually default to the USB mic as your input source automatically. Or if you're running iOS 26, either in beta form, or if you're watching this video in the future and after it's been released, you can swipe down to Control Center, tap here to open this menu, and you can manually select the USB microphone from the list of available inputs. USB mics give you much better clarity and frequency response than the built-in microphones on iPads. Just watch out for power issues if you're using a lightning-based iPad. Some mics draw more power than your iPad can supply on its own. If you're serious about getting the best quality recordings possible, then an audio interface and an XLR microphone or jack line-in for a guitar, for example, is the way to go. And the good news here is that GarageBand for iPad will work brilliantly with pretty much any USB class-compliant audio interface out there. If you don't have one of these yet and are looking for an interface well suited to recording on iPad, I definitely recommend this one, the Audient ID4. This Audient ID4 supports use with iOS and iPadOS, so you can use it with your iPhone or your iPad. It has a combo XLR slash line input on the back, so you can attach either an XLR microphone or a lined instrument like a guitar. It has 48 volt phantom power, so you can power condenser microphones that need that extra oomph to be able to record using them. And on the front, it has headphone outputs, both the larger and smaller sizes for convenience and a dedicated instrument input as well. Controls here are dead easy and simple to get to grips with, meaning that it's easy to just plug this thing in and get recording. If your iPad has a USB-C port like this one, you can simply plug the ID4 into the iPad using a USB-C to USB-C cable. If you're using an iPad with a lightning port, then you'll need to use an active USB hub to correctly power the ID4 and an Apple camera connection kit to plug the USB hub into the iPad's lightning port. Check out this video up in the corner, here, here, up there somewhere, for more information on how working with an audio interface and a lightning base iPad works. I like this option because it's affordable and really well built. You don't really see full body metal construction on pretty much any other audio interface at this price point. This particular model uses the same mic preamps found in audience large format proper mixing consoles. It has really great audio conversion with super low latency. Again, it has that all metal chassis, so it's really hard wearing and also really portable. And it's bus powered, so as I mentioned, you can just plug it straight into your iPad with a USB C to USB C cable and you're off to the races. But most importantly, it's just dead easy to capture great sounding audio with this thing. You can hook up a condenser microphone like the Rode NT1 or a dynamic microphone like the Shure SM50A and record proper studio quality vocals. With a jack input, you can record guitars or any other lined instrument you fancy. With both an XLR microphone and a line in instrument attached, I can select which of these inputs a track will use by opening the input menu here and selecting an input. Once that's set up and ready to go, you record in exactly the same way you did with the previous methods. Just hit that big red record icon and off you go.
Let me know what you plan to record next in GarageBand in the comments down below and give that like button a good hard slap while you're down there. I really appreciate it and it helps more people see this video. And for even more info on how best to get started with GarageBand for iOS, watch this video next.